And if that's your why, you should chase that. You should absolutely chase that. But, you know, in our life, in mine and Tiffany's life, our why was nothing to do with business. It had everything to do with our family. Welcome to the On Purpose Investor Podcast with your host, Eric and Tiffany Vogel. We spent several hard years building a rental property portfolio so we could have more time with our family and live our ideal life. Finding your path can be difficult, so we're here to help guide you along the way with lessons, tips, and tricks to design and implement your dream life through real estate investing. Now sit back, turn up the volume, and get ready for this episode of the On Purpose Investor. Welcome back, Pathfinders, to the On Purpose Investor podcast to show number two, where we talk about how not knowing your why can ruin your life. Yeah, having your why defined, like we talked about in the last episode, is so important. And not having it can be really detrimental to reaching your goals and enjoying your life. You want to wake up every morning excited to live your life, whether it's a Monday or a Friday. And having that dread when you wake up in the morning is probably a sign that you need to change something. Right. I want to talk today a little bit about a passionate W-2 and a practical W-2. And when I say a passionate W-2, I'm talking about your income. (laughs) Your W-2 in our world, uh, in our little circle, Tiffany and I, we often refer to our jobs as a W-2. And a passion W-2 is one where you're not really working for the paycheck. You go to work because you absolutely love what you do and money just does not matter to you. And a practical W-2 is one where you may not be as passionate about it, or you might be passionate about it, but you're really in it for the big bucks or you're in it for sustainment of some sort. So when we're relating how not knowing your why can ruin your life to a passion W-2 or a practical W-2, does your W-2, does your job get you closer or further away from your why? If you are in a passion W-2, if you're in a job that you absolutely love and you need the income, but the income is insignificant to how happy that job makes you, then your job is in alignment with your why. It is quite possible that that job is getting you closer to your why. If you're in a practical W-2 and you don't like Mondays, you don't like going to work, there is probably a good chance that the income that that money brings in can get you closer to your why, but not necessarily the headspace that that job puts you in. There's a good chance that's not getting you closer to your why. So how do we align our jobs with getting us closer to our why in life. Yeah, I know a lot of people were in real estate working a completely unrelated job, but started to pursue some kind of career in real estate, whether it was going to become an agent or flipping houses or really anything that they could take on as their main job that they were doing that was giving them the skill sets they needed to pursue their dream through real estate, for example. So it's finding a job that gives you the skill sets and the mindset and all the the things you need to reach your why. While we were building our real estate career, a lot of my coworkers were busy building their W-2 life. And that was the path they were on and enjoyed. And they were traveling six days a week, a lot of times working 60, 70 hours. So for them, there was no time to really invest in a passion project or side hustle or anything like that. I was probably working the same amount of hours, but I was busy building a life for us outside of my regular job. My job was very much a practical W-2. I enjoyed it, but it was a means to the end financially to get us where we needed to be. Right. And, you know, in all fairness, there are some people in those practical W-2s that are in the grind. They are hustling. And their why in life is likely to be the most senior person in what they do. And that could be their why. And if that is their why and they've established that and their path and their journey is leading them to be a president or a CEO or some upper echelon position within a company, and if that's their why, then more power to them. If that got them closer to their goals in life, whenever they reach the end of their life, they can look back and say, I achieved it. I was where I needed to be. I set a good example for my family, for my children, for those around me you know what? Kudos to them because that's what this is all about. And if that's your why, you should chase that. You should absolutely chase that. But, you know, in our life, in mine and Tiffany's life, our why was nothing to do with business. It had everything to do with our family. 
And it was truly motivated with a sense of where do we want our life to be when our family is at X position? When our children are 10 and under, what do we want to be doing daily? When we are, kids are not in the house anymore, where do we want to be? Where do we want our children to be? Where would we like for our children to be? Those are determining factors of where we wanted to be headed. Yeah, our big focus with the On Purpose Investor Podcast is to just be on purpose. If going, like Eric said, to be a top level in a company is really your purpose in life and where you want to be, that's fantastic to be climbing the corporate ladder. But if you're if your purpose in life, if you want to be home with your family more, but you're working insane hours for a job and not pursuing that purposeful life, that's where we want people to focus and redesign their life to fit that purpose and to avoid facing something like a midlife crisis where you wake up one day and realize the things that you have are not what you wanted out of life. Intentionality is our mission for people to look at their life with a high sense of intentionality. Can you say you wake up with a purpose every morning that every decision you make that day is getting you one step closer to your goals? And do those goals align with your why? So many people give up on their dreams early in their adulthood, we'll say, because they get busy with marriage and a house and kids and all of the things. And that's where that midlife crisis comes in. And I, that's the big thing I want to avoid for us. I want to, to live our full purposeful life now in our 30s instead of waking up in our 50s or 60s wondering, where did life take this turn? How did this happen? You just kind of sleepwalk through life and then wake up one day and realize your kids are grown and you missed tea parties with your daughter or playing ball in the backyard with your son because you were chasing the wrong dream. Right. That leads me into our our next uh, talking point, and that is driven by a quote from the great late Yogi Berra. If you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. And that is so true with, with anything you do in life. If you get in the car and you have no idea where you wanted to be, you'll probably end up someplace wrong. There's a slight chance you might end up where you wanted to go. Like, get in the car, I want to go to the grocery store. But if you don't punch that in your GPS and you're in a new town, you're probably going to end up at a different place. So one quote that we love to reference when talking to people about goal setting is about the airplane that takes off and they have a destination in mind. And the pilot gets in the pilot seat and they punch it in. And unfortunately, something goes wrong and they end up flying off course by one degree. Problem is, they're flying halfway across the world. And one degree, traveling that many miles, they're not just going to miss their airport. They're going to miss their entire country and quite possibly their continent. And that is so true in our lives as well. If we start heading in a direction and we're not very sure about where we're headed, you're likely going to miss your target. We're talking very big picture in life, but really it's, it comes down to what do you do day in and day out to get to your goals? And it's those daily activities. So it might seem really daunting if you're sitting in one place and you know you want to be somewhere completely different to make that leap, but it's all in daily, small tasks and actions. Very true. One little uh, exercise that I did early on was something driven by Tiffany. Uh, She said, Eric, what are you going to do today? I was like, well, I'd like to accomplish these things. And she said, okay, what's the one thing that you can focus on right now in the next hour that's going to get you one step closer to your daily goal? I'd say, well, I should probably sit down and open my email and start typing this email to so-and-so so so that I can email that out with the hopes that they'll email me back with a list of properties or I need to do this so that I could get this. In my mind, I was just looking at all of the tasks that needed to be completed for the day instead of breaking it down one by one and achieving each little goal. Yeah. And going back to what we referenced in the last podcast, that was the one thing principle. And they have a great system of taking your someday goals and breaking them down into five-year, one-year, quarterly, monthly, and then you break it down into your week. And what is the one thing you have to do? One thing, that's the key, the one thing you have to do this week to reach your goal. And then you take that and break it down to the day. And then what's the one thing I can do this hour that will help me reach that goal? So I know it may seem very daunting what we're talking about, but it's really, it's just small steps one at a time. And by taking that small step, you'll be a step closer 
to reaching a goal in a life that's purposeful and what you you want to experience. Yeah, if you're finding yourself being unintentional with your time, it's easy to look back and say, what did I do today? Not really sure what I did. And when I was thinking about what I would say during this, I, I got to thinking about what was my life like before I met Tiffany. And what that was like was at tax return time, when I would get my W-9 and I'd give it to the, the folks at Jackson Hewitt or H&R Block, they'd put on, on the form, oh, you made X amount of money this year. And I would just <laughs> sit there and kind of chuckle at myself and say, there's no way I made that much money this year, which wasn't a lot. I was a high school teacher, but it was a lot. and. I had nothing to show for it. I had no clue what I spent my money on. Sure, some of it went toward a rent or a house payment or a car payment, but I was so unintentional with what I was spending my money on and I wasn't tracking it. So I couldn't remember what I spent my money on. And it's so incredibly applicable to our time. When you look back, the great rent song, 525,600 minutes, how do you measure a year? And that's how many minutes are in a year. And if you tracked every single one of those minutes, how many of those minutes would you say were spent getting you closer to your why? I can tell you this, before Tiffany and I went on this journey together, I was incredibly unintentional with my time, just as I was with my money. And when I sat down and said, I've got to get more intentional about this. I've got to make sure that at least five minutes of my day is spent in alignment with what I want the rest of my life to be, or else I'm going to get to the end of my life and see that nothing was in alignment and I'm not anywhere close to where I wanted to be. I did a similar thing. I was reaching after uh, climbing the corporate ladder without any real intention or goal in that. It just, I was told to go to school, get a good job. I went on to grad school and did what I thought I was supposed to do, but it wasn't really what I guess I wanted out of life. I never sat down and thought, big picture, if I could have anything I wanted, what would that look like? So I was chasing goals and pursuing things that didn't really align with my why because I never thought through what my why was. So how do you figure out what your why is? How did we figure it out? It started with the top 10. Right. And thinking through what a good day and what makes us happy. And then from there, we to find out a vision statement, which we'll talk about in a future episode of what that entails. But it took us a long time, probably a year or two of just dreaming and tweaking. And we both knew we wanted to be home and really, really present for our kids. Would you say that our top 10 changed of what makes us happy? We've gone back and looked at them. And I think there might be one or two things that changed, but for the most part, it's been pretty steady because it was I'll really focused on spending time with friends and family, and that didn't change. We just added a crazy monster to chase around the house and that. She's talking about her son. Yes, he is into everything at a year old. But no, like I think not a lot changed on my list. I don't think a lot changed on yours. No, I will say that sometimes in your top 10, you're probably going to enjoy more than just 10 things. You're probably going to love more than just 10 things. But those 10 things obviously are what guide you to your vision casting. Mm -hmm. And you might replace your top 10, one of your top 10s with a different item. In mine, let's say that one of my top 10 was that I wanted to build things more. I wanted to do woodworking more. But now I realize that, oh, well, I'm not as passionate about woodworking as I used to be. Now I'm far more passionate about, let's say, exercising. And now exercising is way more important to me than woodworking was. And so I'm going to switch woodworking with exercising and make sure that the time that I'm spending during my day, that I can hit one of those items, that I can hit that exercising bullet. Because like we said, with intentionality, that top 10 list is going to guide you on how you spend your days. That top 10 list is going to guide you on how to cast your vision. It's very important that you visit your top 10 and say, do these things still matter to me as much as they did when I casted them? So in reaching goals, Tiffany was talking about she was reaching goals, but they weren't goals that got her closer to her why. And we have friends that have good goals and they reach their goals and and we see them achieve their goals on and on again. And sometimes it's easy to reach your goal but not exactly 
take the time to enjoy what you have achieved. Yeah, and that's something we've really struggled with. We hit our target and our goal, but we were still hustling. And we traded these great jobs that worked. Well, I worked 40 hours a week. You worked an insane amount of time as a high school band director. But our hustle took more time than our jobs did. And after having the baby, we really had to ramp things down and adjust and start to enjoy the freedom that we have because that's what we worked hard for. We were continuing the the hustle and working harder than we did when we had our jobs to pursue nothing, really. I mean, we were just continuing on the path, but it was we needed to stop smell the roses and enjoy everything we had built and that we we achieved our goals. Right. One of our other goals was financial freedom. Now, just because you're financially free doesn't mean you're filthy rich. It doesn't mean you're rich in any sense. It just means that, you know, you've met your monthly nut, as Gary Johnston likes to say. You can pay your bills. There is fat fire, financial independence, retire early. A fat fire is where you have excess. And skinny fire is where, you know, you're, you're paying your bills. You're good. And I would say that we found a comfortable life somewhere a little after skinny fire. Not quite fat fire, but we found comfortability. And one thing that took us to get to where we are was an extreme sense of frugality. And it took us a lot (laughs) to accept that we can afford Netflix. Right. Or (laughs) we have one set of sheets for our bed. And I finally went to Big Lots and spent a whopping $12 to buy a second set of sheets. So when we have a situation and the baby winds up pooping on our sheets at eight o'clock at night, we still have sheets for that night and don't have to hurry to do a load of laundry. Right. And we say all this to say, when you reach your goals, it is okay to slow down. When you have a goal of having free time, don't be afraid to use your free time because you've now achieved that. If you have a goal of saving up $10,000 for something, when you save it up, by God, go get that something. Yeah. I mean, even today, this morning, we knew we wanted to come in and record this podcast, but we dropped Otto off at school and said, let's go get breakfast together and just enjoy some time. It was not something we would have done in the past because we were so focused on the hustle. We're trying to take a step back and enjoy the life that we've built. And we still get the time to come record this great podcast while he's dozing away peacefully in his crib. But we're finding ways to enjoy life more instead of just constantly working and grinding. Right. What do you say to those people that say, you know, I'm not sure how to stop because I love working? There's balance in everything and moderation. That is my word right now is moderation and grace. Those are my two words. And it's finding a way to enjoy what you're doing, but also not to overindulge. Whether that's food, with the holidays, it's right in uh, December for us as we're recording this, and all the good foods at all the family holidays and the cookies and everything, it's finding moderation. So whether it's with food and alcohol, or it's in something that can be considered positive with work, if you overdo it, life's just going to pass you by. Yeah. You don't want to be sitting on your deathbed and looking back and wishing you could have done things differently. There's one thing that is very common for people that are at the end of their life. They don't wish they had more money. They don't wish they had more cars or more houses. They wish they had more time. And more time with their family. They don't regret, oh, I wish I could have spent 10 more hours at the office that week. That is so true. We get very wrapped up in what we're enjoying in the moment. It is so easy to overindulge with things we enjoy. You know, it's football season right now, and a lot of people are getting very invested in college football and seeing if Georgia can upset Michigan and Alabama and win the national championship finally, again, since the 80s. But there's a lot of people overindulging in sports. I personally overindulged in the Atlanta Braves when they won their 2021 World Series championship. I'm actually drinking some sweet tea out of my World Series championship cup right now. But that was a moment of overindulgence for me that I sacrifice certain things because I wanted to indulge in that. I made a choice. I was very intentional about my choice because I have been practicing being purposeful, being intentional. And I knew what I was sacrificing. And what I sacrificed were several, several sleepy days where I stayed up very late watching the Braves. 
I sacrificed some quality time with my family whenever I went to Game 3 of the World Series. I knew what I was missing, though. I was very intentional about my choice because it's not every day you get to see your team go and win a world championship. Right, but I think a lot of people spend so much time watching Netflix or anything on TV, really, and it's not helping them achieve a life they want. They're, they're numbing themselves to the realities of their life and not working to pursue things that fulfill them. And it, it, we become a society that's numbing ourselves with drugs and alcohol and media, TV, social media, things like that. And we're not pursuing our goals. We're, we're forgetting our goals because we're numbing ourselves from the pain of a life that's not the life we want to live. Ultimately, we're vicariously experiencing other people's success and having a bit of a dopamine rush with the slight thought of, wow, that must be nice, instead of being intentional about our own lives and saying, that is nice, I will have that, instead of, it must be nice, I wish I had that. And that's one thing that, we, that I absolutely learned by reading Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad in the very first couple chapters. It's not, there's no way I can afford that. It's, how can I afford that? It's that mindset shift of asking yourself there's, or saying to yourself, I can't do that. I can't afford that. I'll never be that smart. I'll never be that gifted. It's how can I? Yeah. Next week, we're going to talk a lot about your relationship with money. And for us, the, the mindset shift, like Eric said, of how can I do this? Not I can't was huge for us. And it's we spend so much of our life spending our time, not investing in things that matter. And when you do that, you wind up off track and with a life that's not dedicated to your why. So that's really how not knowing your why can ruin your life. That's all we have for you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and listening to us talk about how not knowing your why can ruin your life. How can you make the time you spent with us worthwhile? Is it thinking about what gets you excited to get out of bed each morning? Working with your significant other or business partner to change the parts of your work or life you don't enjoy? Or something else? Don't let the time you've invested go to waste. You only get one life, so live it purposely. That's all we have for you today. See you next time. Are you ready to discover and build your dream life? Then it's time to become a Pathfinder. Head over to onpurposeinvestor.com and sign up for our newsletter to get tips and tricks to help you find your path and get the latest from our blog. If you haven't already, we'd really appreciate an honest review on your favorite podcast app. If you're enjoying this show, share it with friends, family, and fellow investors. See you next time at the On Purpose Investor Podcast.